What bothered me the most was that these people absolutely refused to acknowledge that I might have any honest reason for disagreeing with them. And that felt like a punch in the gut, especially on top of the fact that I couldn't go to work, but I was being encouraged to go out and protest. I'm Natalie Beisner. I am a conservative Christian and a political content creator. But before that, I was an atheist Democrat for a long time, and I didn't know anything about politics. In fact, I'm embarrassed by the things that I didn't know. Um, I have lived in Los Angeles for close to 10 years, where I currently reside, and yes, it plays a big part in my walkaway story. I was also an actress for a very long time, so I guess I just took it as gospel truth that compassionate people vote Democrat, and Democrats are compassionate people. <laughs> um, in 2016, I drove a hundred miles round trip just to vote for Hillary Clinton for president. I was still registered in an old county, despite the fact that at that point I had been living in Los Angeles for close to two years. So that gives you an idea of just how politically motivated I was. I couldn't be bothered to actually register in the correct county, to actually do any research on the ballot. I just really, 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 really needed to vote for Hillary Clinton for president. So I spent the majority of the Trump administration hating that man. I couldn't tell you why I hated him exactly, but I could definitely tell you that I hated him. But something interesting happened during the Trump years. Um, it was the first time that I remember becoming aware of this forceful push for racial diversity above all things. Not just in Hollywood, which I have since left for many reasons, but also beyond Hollywood everywhere. It was also the first time that I remember hearing the phrase white privilege. And then I heard it over and over and over again. And even though I was still so liberal, so Democrat, so totally on board with everything, that phrase felt like a little bit of a betrayal from my side because um, it doesn't match my experience. It doesn't match the experience that I've seen my parents have or my family. Um, I'm incredibly blessed in so many ways, we all are, just to live in this nation, but I come from a family that works very hard and also struggles a great deal to this day. And to be frank, there is no part of me that can relate to white privilege whatsoever. Also, there seems to be no one who can actually tell me what specifically white privilege is, especially when you divorce it from wealth and finances, but I stuffed all that down because I thought it made me not compassionate, not a good liberal, and it's also not exactly something you say as a white liberal actress in Hollywood. But I remember that because it was the first time that I became clued into the fact that something might not be quite right here. And then... 2020 happened, and like so many Americans, I lost both of my jobs overnight, which gave me concern because of my family and my financial situation, and also I just need to work. But I was, that said, I was totally on board with everything. I was scared, I didn't know what was going on, and I wanted to do my part, and I did do my part. But as two weeks to slow the spread turned into two months and counting, I did start to have some questions. No one was talking about opening up again, getting people back to work, despite the fact that even at that point, it had become somewhat clear that this was maybe not quite as bad as they had originally been projecting, and thank God. Um, and there were strange things going on around me, not just the arrows on the floor of this supermarket to give you a direction which way to go to protect you from COVID, but also all of the parks around me were caution taped off, just caution tape like maliciously wrapped around and around and around, not just the jungle gym, but also the exercise equipment, which was already six feet apart, these body weight machines. And I thought how odd that an adult cannot come to these machines, which, which are six feet apart, out in the California sun, to get healthy, to stay healthy during a global health crisis. And then I would take these long walks around Los Angeles and um, just to try to stay sane and somewhat healthy. Um, and I never wore a mask outdoors. I always, at the time, wore one indoors, which was really just to the grocery store. But wearing one outdoors didn't quite make sense to me, especially because if ever I saw anyone coming, I would get off the street, the sidewalk well in advance, advance into the street. And I would even cross the street if I could, just to be respectful. But it didn't matter because every single person that I encountered on those walks throughout 2020, well into 2021, every single person stopped to tell me, sometimes to yell at me, what a bad person I was for being unmasked, alone, 
outdoors, in the sun, on a walk, not sick, well over six feet away from anyone. And sometimes that would be my only face-to-face -face human interaction for the day because I was following the rules. And of course, I know I could have solved this by just putting on a mask for these walks, but that didn't seem truthful to me. I thought, you know, I've already given up my jobs. I don't know when I'll get them back. Turns out never. I stay home. I don't see my family. I don't go out. I only go to the grocery store. You know, what else do these people want from me? I don't understand how I can get someone sick when I'm not sick from across the street, you know, outdoors on a walk alone. So it was these little things that started adding up as not quite right, but I continued to do my part. And then summer 2020, I was told, we were all told, both implicitly and also explicitly, that I could go out and riot or protest, but I still couldn't go to work. And in fact, the same people telling me that I could go out and protest or worse, were the same people telling me that it was still not safe for me to go to work. The people on the nightly news who never let go of their COVID death count yet supported these protests. The Democrat leaders in my city and in my state who locked everything down yet supported these protests. Even some of the medical community, many of whom were telling me I was going to die of COVID, yet many of them supported these protests. I remember reading in the New York Times on CNN about doctors signing letters, please don't shut down these historic necessary protests. And I don't want to shut down anyone's First Amendment right to peacefully protest, but if you were encouraging and supporting these protests, it was clear that this was not quite the level of public health emergency you were claiming that it was. So can I get back to work? I really need to get back to work. And on top of that, I watched these mom and pop shops, these independent stores and restaurants that had just barely been permitted to open in Los Angeles, still with heavy, heavy restrictions. I watched them shut down again, bar up their doors and windows, due to peaceful protests. At one point, Los Angeles was under a nightly curfew due to peaceful protests on top of a lockdown that at that point had gone on for many months, would continue on for many more months, although none of us necessarily knew that at the time. And I thought, this is crazy. This is not how I want to live. It's incredibly hypocritical. And no one on the left that I knew, which was everyone that I knew at that time, and no one on the left that I knew of, no celebrity, no politician, no one, was voicing my concerns or the concerns of the many people like me, the people who would probably survive COVID, but maybe not survive the response to COVID financially or emotionally or mental health wise. And whenever I dared to even remotely voice my concerns, usually in an overly long, overly polite Facebook post, I would be immediately shut down by the Democrat people on my feed, all of the people on my feed. I was called selfish, I was called racist. So here was this white privilege thing again in the middle of this global health crisis, this unprecedented situation, when I was just kind of asking, can I go back to work? I need to go back to work. And what bothered me the most about this was not that these people disagreed with me. It wasn't even that they wanted to keep us locked down. What bothered me the most was that these people absolutely refused to acknowledge that I might have any honest reason for disagreeing with them. And that felt like a punch in the gut, especially on top of the fact that I couldn't go to work, but I was being encouraged to go out and protest. And I did have an honest reason for disagreeing with them. I wanted and I needed to get back to work. And I should have been able to do that. So I walked away from the Democrat Party. For the first time in my life, I could draw a clear, undeniable line from my current state of suffering, my current quality of life, to Democrat policies. And the Democrat Party has proven me correct every single day since walking away. There was one point in Los Angeles after I walked away wherein for about six months, I could not walk into a bar or restaurant in the city that I have lived in for close to 10 years in the state that I have paid taxes and lived in for my entire life because I didn't have the right medical papers. Now that was all Democrats and I will never forget it. I hope no one ever does. I ended up becoming a conservative Christian, which I know is not everyone's walk away story and um, definitely never thought it would be mine. And it didn't happen overnight. It was a slow, gradual process that happened because of two things. When I walked away from the Democrat party, number one, I became informed and involved with politics for the first time in my life. 
for the first time in my life, I realized how important not just voting is, but informed voting, how important state and local elections are. I was painfully aware of the fact that my fellow Americans in other parts of the country were leading semi-normal lives despite this global crisis because of the people that they had elected as mayors and especially governors, etc. And I wanted to make sure this never happened to people like me again, so I wanted to be informed about all the things I had been in ignorant about. And uh, so because of that, number two, I became, probably for the first time, open to outside voices, to differing opinions. I realized that so much that I had been so sure I was right about, well, I'd been wrong about it. And if that were true, there were probably other things I was wrong about. And sure enough, <laughs> there were. As it turns out, I agree with the conservative position on most issues. On most issues, the conservative position is reasonable, rational, logical, scientific, moral, ethical. The liberal position is emotional. The conservative position has compassion. The liberal position has faux compassion. I am continually struck to this day as I study the history that came before me, the history that occurred during my lifetime that I was ignorant of, and the current situation, I'm continually struck by the fact that Democrat policies time and again harm the very demographic that they were put in place to help. Women, minorities, the people coming in at the border, even with COVID. Democrats claimed throughout, and they claim still, that they had the only compassionate response to COVID. Yet, how many people were harmed, self-included, by that compassion? And somewhere in all that, Christ called me back to him. I was saved and um, went back to the church after having left it for a long time, became a Christian. And now, this is the kind of stuff I talk about online on my pages and sometimes at rallies, and I'm grateful to do it. I want to thank you all so much for listening to my story. And the last thing I want to share is, you know... It is one thing to walk away from a party or a group because you can just no longer stomach what it is they stand for. But it's another thing entirely to have a home waiting for you on the other side, a warm welcome. And that's what I found with Walk Away. I think no matter what, I would have always walked away from the Democrat Party on my own um, in summer 2020 because in Los Angeles, I had a front row seat to being affected by the hypocritical, insane Democrat policies. But without Walkaway, I don't know if I would be politically active, politically involved, um, speaking out, speaking out about my Walkaway story. But what I have found with Walkaway, with every person who's not of the radical left, um, there is a tolerance, ironically, and a warmth that the left does not have. You know, over the past three years, I have received a lot of hate from the left for leaving the left. They continue to do what they did with COVID, with BLM, what they do with everything, which is refuse to acknowledge that I might have an honest reason for disagreeing, an honest reason for walking away. But you know what I've never gotten? I have never once received a response of, wow, it took you until 2020 to stop voting Democrat? Why did it take you so long? I never once received a welcome like that after walking away. And I think that alone speaks volumes about the difference in attitude between the radical left and everyone else. And I hope that you know how much that means, especially to people like me, someone who didn't just walk away from the Democrat Party, but essentially had her entire worldview flip, flip upside down over the course of a year. And it is frightening and um, humbling to realize you were wrong about so much for so long and to admit you were wrong and then to receive a warm welcome on the other side of that, instead of self-righteousness or vindictiveness, that is a wonderful, blessed thing. So I hope you know how much that means to people like me, and I hope we never lose it. I want to thank Brandon and everyone in the walkaway community. Um, God bless you all.